Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. This is Tabinda Itazaz. In this lecture, I am going to discuss some important features and terminologies used in Microsoft Excel. Have you ever heard about spreadsheet software? A spreadsheet software is a computer application that is used to analyze and store data in tabular form. Tabular form means in the form of rows and columns. There are several types of spreadsheet softwares, but Microsoft Excel is the most popular and widely used spreadsheet program. Different organizations or companies use Microsoft Excel to track their profit and loss summary. Economists can create graphs of economy's growth. Household women can create their budgets and a teacher can create a result card for student. MS Excel can also be used to record expenditures and income, to plan budgets, to view data in the form of charts or graphs. MS Excel or a spreadsheet software contains a grid of rows and columns. This is a grid of rows and columns. Here you see each vertical line is known as a column and each column is represented by an alphabetic letter. For example, this is column A, this is column B, column C, D and so on. Similarly, each vertical line is called a row and each row is assigned a number like this is row number 1, this is row number 2, 3 and so on. The intersection of each row and column is called a cell. There are two states of a cell, active cell and passive cell. Right now, this is an active cell because I have clicked on this cell and it is surrounded by a bold black border. And the all other cells on this grid are passive cells. Each cell has a unique address which is also known as cell reference. Address of a cell is written with reference to its column and row. While writing the address of a cell, first we write the column name and then the row name such as the address of this cell is C10. C is the column name and 10th is the row where this cell is selected. Similarly, if I select this cell, then its address will be C6. As you see here, C6 is the reference number or the address of this active cell. Before writing data into a cell, we have to select that cell. And the data that a cell may contain can be a label type of data, a formula, function, or a number, or command. A label is a text entry such as the name of a column. For instance, I write here, student marks this is the label of my column g now this column is labeled and it is self-explanatory that this column contains students marks another type of data that a cell may contain is a value and a value can be a number a date formula or result of a formula so the difference between label and value is label is a text entry whereas value is a number the next is formula. Formula is used to express mathematical relationship between different cells. For example, if I want to add the value of this cell and this cell in this third cell, then I'll write a formula here to add these values. A formula is always started with is equal to sign and then I'll write the address of this cell plus the address of this cell. This cell's reference is G6. Now I'll write here G6 and then write plus the address of this cell. Notice that here I wrote G6 manually by typing from keyboard. Another way to write the address of a specific cell is just click on that cell and the address of that particular cell will be written here automatically. I'll click here. The address of this cell is automatically written here. And the Microsoft Excel makes no difference between small letters or capital letters. You can write letter as a capital letter or small letter. Now I'll press enter key 
the result of this formula is shown here if you want to check the formula of a cell just click on that cell and formula will be shown in the formula bar and the address of this cell will be shown here this is i6 ith column and 6th row now if you place any change in these cells the result of formula will be automatically changed for example i'll remove 2 and write 8 here now press enter the result is updated in the formula cell the next important data entry of a cell can be a function the functions are used to perform specific tasks and there are many predefined functions in the microsoft excel such as sum function average function max function min function and so on like a formula a function is also started with is equal to sign and then we write a function and as we start writing something after is equal to sign it provides us a list of functions where we can choose our desired function for instance i am going to return today's date and the function for that particular action is today now i'll write t o f x is used to represent a function the function today returns the current date formatted as a date now i can complete it by using the keyboard or just by clicking on this function leave the parenthesis empty and click enter and today's date is returned another important feature or term that we use in microsoft excel is command commands are used to manipulate the worksheets or the contents of a worksheet now let's see what is meant by a worksheet when we open microsoft excel the window that is opened is called workbook as you can see this is book one this is workbook one of microsoft excel and one workbook may contain several worksheets for example this is a worksheet where i am writing different type of data and i am manipulating different numbers the detail of worksheets is shown at the bottom left corner of the excel workbook and there are three worksheets right now sheet 1 sheet 2 sheet 3 and we can switch between these sheets by clicking on these sheets this is sheet 2 and this is sheet 3 now if you want to create a new sheet you can do it by clicking plus button if you want to create a new sheet between sheet 1 and sheet 2 then select sheet 1 and press plus button a new sheet sheet 5 is created between sheet 1 and sheet 2 and if you want to create a new sheet at the end then click on the last sheet already created and press plus button and a new sheet is created here these are the default names of these worksheets now if you want to change the name of sheet 1 click on sheet 1 right click from mouse press rename and you can change the name of this sheet and the name of this sheet is changed similarly if you want to delete a particular sheet go to that sheet right click from mouse and press the delete button the sheet 5 is deleted from this list now let's discuss another very important feature of ms excel that is cell reference and ranges first of all i'll increase the size of this cell by clicking on this cell now you can change the font size from here you can change the style of font you can use the features of bold italic underline and all the basic commands of word processor like cut copy paste and coloring the font upsizing or downsizing the font all these features are available in microsoft excel as well as we discussed cell reference is the address of a particular cell suppose i want to add this scatter data and i want to show the result of this manipulation in this particular cell now i'll use cell references as i am going to add these numbers so i have to put a formula and formula is always started with is equal to sign now in order to add these random cells i have to write their cell reference this cell reference is c6 i can write c6 from keyboard or simply i can click on this cell i'll write 
plus from keyboard and then click on the next cell plus this cell plus this i'm adding these numbers you can multiply these numbers you can subtract these numbers or the mixture of different operators my formula is completed and it is also shown in the formula bar after pressing enter key from keyboard the result of this formula will be shown in the same cell press enter key this is how you can use cell references to manipulate data the other term is cell ranges suppose you have entered data in contiguous cells contiguous cells means the cells adjacent to each other instead of writing the cell reference of each cell you can use cell ranges for instance i want to add these numbers which are written in contiguous cells by using cell ranges we have to write the address of first cell followed by colon and then we write the cell reference of the last contiguous cell and the cells in between are automatically selected the cell range starts from c17 which is this cell c17 and the range ends at h17 so if your formula involves contiguous cell you can use cell ranges as well now let's use the sum function to add all these numbers after the is equal to sign i'll write sum then parenthesis start and at the end of cell range i'll close this parenthesis press enter here you see the result of the addition of these contiguous cells is 30 so if you have to manipulate data from contiguous cells then you can use cell ranges and if you have to manipulate data from different cells from scattered or random cells then you can use their cell references to manipulate that data another very important terminology used in microsoft excel is relative addressing and absolute addressing which is also known as relative referencing and absolute referencing the relative and absolute referencing are very important while working with formulas so let's see what is the difference between these two terms suppose i want to add these two numbers and to show the result of this addition in this cell simply i'll write is equal to sign the address of first cell plus address of second cell this simple addressing is called relative addressing or relative referencing what if i copy this formula and paste in some other cell naturally the result should remain same but let's see what happens to copy this formula just select this cell press control plus c from keyboard go to the destination cell press control plus v now double click to view the formula and see the formula is changed here the formula was c9 plus d9 as this cell c9 plus d9 but when i copied this formula c9 plus d9 in another cell the formula was changed with reference to the current row which is c13 and d13 now i wanted to copy the same formula but it is changed due to relative referencing now in order to avoid this situation in order to copy the same formula in any other cell what i have to do is i should use absolute referencing or absolute addressing which is very simple you simply have to place a dollar sign before the column and before the row number for instance before the column which is c i'll write dollar sign and before the row number i'll write dollar sign similarly in the second address i'll place dollar sign before column and before row this type of referencing is called absolute referencing press enter the result is same as it was before but when i'll copy this formula to another cell the addresses won't be changed let's copy it press control c click on the destination cell now press control v and enter and you see the same formula is copied from this cell to this cell 
and there is no change between the formula or between the result of this formula. It was a relative and absolute referencing. Thank you for watching. For more computer science lectures, subscribe to my channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notifications for new lectures.